my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not, if you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and not the older one. Today we will solve some problem that you will find on page number 594. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. If at the end of the video, if at the end of the video you decide that you find that this was helpful and that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me a simple email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Let's take a look at the very first problem that you see there on, page, on the page, page number 594 as I said, number 11. It says, which of the following, there are, there are choices for four equations obviously, which of, the which of the following could be the equation for the graph that is given? And the graph that is given looks something like this. And it's clearly marked, and if you look at the graph in front of you there in the book, you'll see, just like it shows here, that it crosses the x-axis, it crosses the x-axis at negative 3, oh. well this is no good. It crosses the x-axis at negative 3. It crosses again. It crosses again at negative 2, uh, positive by negative 3. It crosses here as positive 2. It crosses the x-axis. And then it touches the origin right here. It, it bounces off the origin. And the question simply is, what's the equation for this particular graph? Let's take a look at it, shall we? So if we say y is a function of x, and we, if we go systematically, we will know, we can tell that y is going to be 0, right here, x x x is y is 0 when x is equal to negative 3. So that's the first one. And how do we show this? Like this. This would be the case here, because here, if x is negative 3, negative 3 and a positive 3 will give us 0, and y is 0. The second place where it happens is where x is 0, y is 0. So if x is 0, y is 0. That's the second place it happens. So, so far so good. So far we have, we have a second degree equation. So this times that, and then it, cut, it, it cuts the x-axis here at positive 2, which tells us that, I'm going to erase this part, that we, one, we have one more at x equals to negative 2. Why negative 2? Because if x is positive 2 here, we put in positive 2 here, positive 2 and a negative 2, and that will give us 0. So it looks like the answer is this. All we have to do is put them in the proper order, as the convention dictates, as the tradition dictates, which is we write the x first, then the x minus, then the negative one, x minus two, and then x plus three. And there is your there is your function. And it looks like the answer choice is A. It looks like the answer choice is A. It looks like it, alas, but it is not. Answer A, answer choice A is wrong here. It is wrong, and I'm, I'm going to explain to you here why it is wrong. It's because of this bouncing that happens here. What I want you to do right now, what I, what I, would, what I would like you to do right now, is to think of this, the same exact graph, think of the same exact graph, just pretend that we have shifted it down a little bit, so it, it, it goes like this. If it were like that, if it were like that, it would have had four solutions, one here, one here, one here, in other words, x axis is down, but the x axis is brought down, and one right here. We would have had four solutions we can clearly see. What we show, the scenario that we're showing here, scenario that we're showing here, and the scenario that is depicted to us, they're not, they're not different. It's the same graph, it's the exact same graph, it's been shifted up or down, doesn't matter. If you shift it up or down, it doesn't matter. It's the exact same graph, same exact animal. And if this one has four, four solutions, so does this one. But the question is, where do the four, four solutions come from? Let's take a look at it. I don't want you to memorize it. I, I don't want you to memorize it. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you what goes through my mind. It, it's, not a technical, it's not a technical definition, but it helps me intuitively and helps me remember what's going on here. So here's what's going on. I want you to think of, I want you to think of this one here. 
as one parabola by itself. I want you to think of this one, this one here, as one parabola by itself. Think of this as one parabola. And what solutions does this one have? This solution, this, this right here, this one that we just drew, it has solution of negative three and zero, which would be x plus three and zero. Now let's take a look at this guy. Now take a look at this guy. What solution would this guy have? What, what equation rather? It's zero and positive two. Zero and positive two. Zero would just be x, and a positive two would be simply x minus two. And because they are put together, because they are put together, it still has four solutions, just like the previous case when we shifted the x, x axis down a little bit. We, we could, if we shift the x axis down a little bit, we could clearly see that it, it crosses at four different parts, and therefore it has four solutions. This guy still has four solutions, but what's going on here is that when we combine this one and that one, think of this as two different parabola, if it helps you remember. When we combine the two together, what we end up here is that for the first part, this part right here, we have this guy, and for the second part, we have this guy. And what, what happens in the process is that we have solution of x, we have a solution of negative 3, we have a solution of 0, we have a solution of 0, and then we have positive 2. Two of these solutions are the same. They are identical solution, but they are two solutions indeed. They happen to be identical. And therefore, and therefore the correct equation here would be we have we have the x minus 2 here. We have the x plus 3, it's x times x, not just x, it's x times x, which is x squared, which is x squared. Here's the other one, I just opened the thing here, and the same exact thing, it's a new batch that I just opened, brand new ones. So the answer here is not, the answer, correct answer here is not A, the correct answer is, this is x squared here, and the correct answer is B. And it comes from here. It comes from the fact that it has, it does have four solutions, negative 3, 0, 0, and positive 2. And 0, 0 comes from here. This, this guy has a solution of 0, and that guy has a solution of 0. And that's where the x squared comes from. So if you want to plot it, this is the equation you're going to need. Do you understand? Let's do number 12. That's how I remember it, that's how I think of it, and it helps me. Well, it says 2 times A over B equals 1 half. The question is, how much is, how much is B over A? How much is B over A? Let's take a look at it. First thing, we'll do, first thing we want to do is get rid of this 2 here. Let's get rid of this 2 by multiplying both sides by 1 half. Multiply this side by 1 half. Multiply that side by one half. This two is going to cancel out, and we end up with a over b equals one half times one half is one quarter. We're not looking; they're not looking for the value of a over b. We're looking for the value of b over a. So we just take the just take the reciprocal of it. The reciprocal of the whole equation, and b over a would simply be four over one, or simply four. The answer is simply four. Which is answer choice D. Let's take a look at the next one, number 13. Number 13, we are told that the production, production drop from 4 million in 2000 I just don't believe it. It's the entire packet of four I just opened. And what a waste of money. The production we are told drops from four million barrel of oil in 2000 to, to this is how it should be, to 1.9 million barrel in 2013. And the question is, among the four equations that they give us, which is the right equation? Well, we'll find it simpler 
I think it will be easier for us to take, tackle this thing if we, visual, if we visualize this with an aid of a graph. So let's put together a quick graph here. So here is our time. Here is our time, a year. And we start at, two, at year 2000. And we end our story at 2013. We end our story at 2013, 13 years later. And the production's per, original production was four. One, two, three, four. So we start from here, right there. So that tells us that I, our, our y-intercept is four. The equation that we're looking for would be in the shape of a, in the form of a slope intercept. This is our intercept, and that has to equal to four. Because that's the original production in 2000, that's where we're starting from. And then what happens? It, this is one, two, so one, right here. It, it drops to 1.9, not, not quite two, but 1.9. 1.9 here. By the time we reach 2013. And this is what we're looking at. The question is, what's the appropriate equation for this, uh, for, 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 for this line? Well, let's find out. We already have the intercept. We have to figure out the slope now. The slope is simply the change in y over the change in x. Let's do it on the top. Or we can do it here. Now, the only thing need, we need to pay attention is, let's give, this, let, let's give this point's name. Let's call this A and B. We can either go from A to B or from B to A, but we cannot mix them up. So let's first go A to B, and then we'll go B to A, and we'll see that we get the same result. If we go from A to B, at A, the coordinates are x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 4. Here, the x coordinate is 13, 13 for the 13th year, because that's what we're measuring on the x-axis, and the y coordinate is 1.9, that's what we're dealing with. So let's do it very quickly. So change in y, 4 minus 1.9, 4 minus 1.9, and 0 minus 13. And 0 minus 13 is where we're going to get on, where we're going to pick up our negative sign, because as you can clearly see, it's a negatively sloped line. So that's one way to do this. Here we are going from here to here, from A to B. If we had gone from B to A, nothing would have changed. Going from B to A, would be 1.9 minus 4. See, we already picked up our negative sign. And then 13 minus 0. So going from A to B, the negative sign appears at the bottom. Going from B to A, the negative sign appears on the top. Either way, the quantity is negative. That's what it is. Well, how much is the slope? Enough of the talk. How much is the slope? The slope is negative 1.9 minus 4. 4 minus, 1 point, 4 minus 2 would have been 2, so it's going to be 2.1. 2.1 over 13. That's the slope. 2.1 over 13. Let's do it on the top here. Two point one over thirteen. And let's let's get rid of this decimal. We're gonna get rid of this decimal by multiplying top and bottom by ten. And if we multiply top and bottom by uh, by ten, we, we can have the whole number on the top. Two point one becomes twenty-one, so we have twenty-one over 113. There you go. We have our slope, we have our intercept, we are done. The equation is, the equation is m, which is which we just found to be negative 21 over 130, x plus b, which is 4. There is our equation. The one that matches this one is what we are looking for. And that is going to be answer choice C from, from the looks of it. The only difference is that I use the variable x, they are using t for time. It makes no difference. It makes absolutely no difference. x here is the time. Number 14. Number 14 says, How many solutions does the following system of equations have? Oh, no, that's not, that's not, that's not proper English. Even though this is equations, system of equations, but what we're talking about is a system, one system, system. Without singular. 
So how many solutions does this system? Oh, that is correct. Does this system have? That's right. Never mind. And the equations that are given to us are y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 7. And here we are told y minus 5x plus 8 is equal to 0. First thing we need to do is to put, the, put both of them in the same format, like this one here, where the independent variable uh, is on one side and the dependent variable y is on the other side. So, in other words, we want y on this side, everything else on the other side. So that will be y is equal to bring negative 5x to the other side, become positive 5x, bring 8 to the other side, it's negative 8. So here we are told y equals this quantity, and here we are told y equals this quantity, which means these two quantities have to be equal to each other if they're going to cross each other, if they're going to intersect. Let's do that. So x squared plus 3x minus 7 has to equal 5x minus 8. 5x minus 8. Let's bring the 5x to this side. We'll end up with 5x squared minus 2x. Bring the 8 to this side, which will become positive 8. There we go. And here we have two ways of doing it. We can either recognize exactly that this is a perfect square, or we can factorize it. If you're able to recognize right away that it's a perfect square, you're done. It is a perfect square because what we have here is this a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. That's what we have here. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is simply a minus b whole squared is equal to 0. Which means x equals equal to 1 is the only solution. It has only how many solutions does it have? The answer is it has only one solution. There is only one solution. Now, if you are unable to see this part that is a perfect square, we could affect it. It's not a big deal. We could affect it very easily. We're looking for two numbers so that when we multiply them, we get positive 1, and when we add them, we get negative 2. The two numbers are going to be negative 1 and negative 1. x squared minus x minus x plus 1. There you go. Negative x and negative x is going to give us the positive x squared, and negative x and negative x adds up to negative 2x. If you look at these two terms, there's a common factor of x. We have x minus 1 here. And if you look at these two terms, we have a common factor of negative 1. Not positive 1, negative 1. From these two terms. We take out negative 1, we end up with x, and this 1 this positive 1, when we write here, it has to be written as negative 1 because that's how we're going to get negative 1, negative 1 is going to give us positive 1 and now we have this as a common factor, x minus 1 and we're left here with x and we're left here with negative 1 and there we go, we end up with x minus 1 whole squared, it's the same exact thing so to so the answer here is we only have one solution and the one solution is when x is equal to 1. Last one, number 15. So number 15 says that g of x, g of x is equal to 2x minus 1 and we are told that h of x is equal to 1 minus g of x. The question is we are told that g of 0 is equal to negative 1. The value of the, value of the function g is 0 when x is 1, or rather when x is 0. The value of the function g is, is negative 1 when x is 0. The question is, what's the value of h when x is 0? Well, it's very straightforward. Here, was this given to us? This must have been given to us, obviously. Oh no, this is not given to us. This is something I did. Let's, let's, let's slow down. So this is what is given to us. We are given this function, we are given that function, and, and the question is this. Let's start again from scratch. This is what we are given this function, we are given this function, and the question is what's the value of this function h when x is 0? Okay, let's start from here. So the very first thing we need to figure out is what's the value of this function at x equal to 0? We put it in here, 0, minus 1, 2 times 0 is 0, so it looks, looks like g of 0 is equal to negative 1. Now that we have g of 0, we can put it in here, because here we're looking for h of 0, would equal to 1 minus g of 0, 
and g of 0 we just found out is negative 1. So it's 1 minus a negative 1 which gives us positive 2. h of 0 is positive 2. And that was the end of problem number 15. We'll meet tomorrow again, obviously, and we'll do the gradient question, the last five questions in this section, all the gradient questions tomorrow when we meet, all right? Again, if you want to get hold of me, simply send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. All right? Bye now.